first question pine tree is the example of which of the following okay so now basically trees are classified into two types okay trees are classified into two types they are exogenous and endogenous trees so now if you take the endogenous trees the examples are tall trees whatever the tall trees are there they are the example of endogenous trees okay so the trees which ever grows in length direction the trees which ever grows in height direction they are called as endogenous trees so the example for the endogenous trees are coconut tree palm tree bamboo tree these things okay then if you take the exogenous trees again they are classified into two types they are coniferous trees and deciduous trees okay, coniferous and deciduous trees so now if you take the coniferous trees the examples are deodar chir fir and pine tree okay deodar chir fir and pine tree and if you take the deciduous trees examples are teak oak sal and mahogany so these are the examples of the deciduous trees now the question asked is pine tree is the example of which of the following so pine tree is the example of which of them they are the coniferous trees okay so coniferous is the answer so basically wood obtained from the coniferous is soft in nature okay so coniferous gives which type of wood soft wood and endogenous trees gives which type of sorry deciduous trees gives which type of wood hard wood okay that's the point so what is pine tree is the example of which type of tree coniferous then next question what is the lifetime of a highly durable timber so basically based on the life of the timber timber is classified into three types they are low durable medium durable and highly durable timber okay so now if you take the low durable timber for that life is less than 5 years and for medium durable timber life is 5 to 10 years and for highly durable timber life is greater than 10 years okay so what is the answer here greater than 10 years okay because in the question they have asked the for the highly durable timber then next one smell of a freshly cut timber is so basically if you take the fresh cut timber then its smell will be sweet in nature okay whatever the smell of the freshly cut timber is there that will be sweet in nature and if you take the decayed timber okay if you take the decayed timber then it will be unpleasant in nature okay so if you take the fresh cut timber then it is sweet in nature if you take the decayed decayed timber it is unpleasant in nature okay so what is the answer here smell of a freshly cut timber that is the sweet so best season to cut the timber in hilly areas is so basically when you cut the timber you should not have lot of moisture at the same time it should not it should not be completely dry because if you see the completely dry timber you can see the cracks in the timber and at the same time if you see the uh, timber with high moisture content then it will be soft in nature okay so when you cut the timber it should not be too dry or else it should not be it should not have high moisture okay it should have medium moisture now considering that if you take the hilly areas suppose okay, if you take the hilly areas in the hilly areas rainfall will be high in the monsoon okay, rainfall will be high in the monsoon okay rainfall is high in the monsoon then in winter also there will be some rainfall okay in winter also there will be some rainfall okay so now because of this rainfall in a mid uh, rainfall in a monsoon and winter you should not cut the timber okay you should not cut the timber so once if this moisture starts evaporating suppose if you take the starting of the summer by the time moisture will not be evaporated okay just the temperatures are increasing so moisture will not be evaporated but if you take the mid summer by the time moisture will be reduced but if you take if you wait till end of the summer again what happens most of the moisture will be evaporated but what is the condition i told 
I told that when you cut the timber, it should not have more moisture. It should not have very less moisture also. That's why you have to cut the timber in the midsummer. Okay. If it is hilly areas, you have to cut the you have to cut the timber in midsummer. If it is plain areas, then you have to cut the timber in midwinter. So remember this point. For plain areas, you have to cut the timber in midwinter. For hilly areas, you have to cut the timber in the midsummer. Okay. Next one is hardwood is. Okay. Options given are hard in nature and light in color, hard in nature and dark in color, soft in nature and light in color, soft in nature and dark in color. So basically, if you say if you take the timber, uh, the cross section of the timber will be like this. Now this outer portion of the timber is called as a sap wood, and this inner portion of the timber is called as a hard wood. So whatever this sap wood is there, that is light in color. Okay, whatever the sap wood is light in color, whatever the hard wood is there, that is dark in color. Okay, then if you take the sap wood, it consists of high moisture. Because of that, it will be soft in nature. But if you take the hard wood, it consists of less moisture. Because of that, it will be hard in nature. Okay, so hard wood is hard in nature and dark in color. That's the point. But if you take the sap wood, that will be soft in nature and light in color. The next one, which of the following indicates the recent growth of the tree? So basically, if you take the timber cross section, okay, as I as I shown in the previous question, it will be like this. Now, first sap wood will grow in the timber. Then this sap wood will be converted into the hard wood. So, if there is more sap wood, suppose if there is more sap wood, then we can say like the timber is going, the timber is growing recently. So the point is the sap wood indicates the recent growth of the tree. Okay, but if if they ask you. What is the reason for the growth of the tree? Okay, what is the reason for the growth of the tree? Then it will be cambium layer. So reason for the growth of the tree is cambium layer, but which indicates the recent growth of the tree is that is the sap wood. Then which of the following gives timber of least strength? So basically there are different types of sawing. So there are four types. They are what? What are they? Ordinary sawing. Tangential sawing, quarter sawing, and radial sawing. What is ordinary sawing is if you if you take the timber cross section which is like this, th then if you make the cuts like this, okay, if you make the cuts at the annular rings like this, these rings are called as annular rings. So if you cut the if you cut the timber tangentially at annular rings like this, then the sawing is called as ordinary sawing. Okay. Now suppose if the cross section is like this, select a single annular ring and make it make the cuts tangentially around the annular rings. Okay, make the cuts tangentially around the annular ring like this. So this kind this kind of sawing is called as a tangential sawing. And when I say quarter sawing, what we do is suppose if this is the timber cross section, we cut. Quarter of the timber portion like this. Okay, we cut a quarter of the timber portion like this, and then cuts has to be made within this quarter portion like this. So this kind of sawing is called as quarter sawing. And what is radial sawing is suppose if this is the timber cross section, then here there will be medullary rays. Okay, these rays are called as medullary rays. Now if you make the cuts parallel to the medullary rays, that means if you cut the if you make the cuts like this. Then this kind of sawing is called as a radial sawing. Now among these four types of sawing, if you see the order of the strength, radial sawing gives more strength than the quarter sawing, and that gives the more strength than the ordinary sawing, and that gives the more strength than the tangential sawing. Okay, so which of the which of the timber gives the least strength is that is the tangential sawing, and which of the timber gives the highest strength is the radial sawing. So what is the answer here? Tangential sawing. So next question, which of the chemicals are used in the chemical seasoning? So basically, seasoning is of two types, natural and artificial. So in the artificial seasoning, again five types are there. They are boiling, water seasoning, chemical seasoning, 
electrical seasoning and kiln seasoning so these are the types now if you take the chemical seasoning in that the chemicals we use are urea sodium sulfate and sodium nit sodium chloride sodium nitrate and calcium acetate so these are the chemicals used in the chemical seasoning okay we use five types of chemicals urea sodium sulfate sodium chloride sodium nitrate and calcium acetate so what is the answer here which of the chemicals are used in the chemical seasoning all the three we use so all the above is the answer the next one which of the following is the most rapid seasoning so as i told earlier we have different types of seasoning so in among this type of seasoning most rapid seasoning is the electrical seasoning it can be uh, through the electrical seasoning we can do the seasoning in less 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 amount of time so electrical seasoning is the most rapid seasoning and which is most controllable seasoning is that is the kiln seasoning so kiln seasoning is the most controllable whereas electrical seasoning is most rapid seasoning okay in the electrical seasoning usually what we do is we pass the current through the timber so whatever the current you pass that will generate the heat in the timber because of that heat moisture will be evaporated okay so that's the point next which of the following code gives the guidelines for preservation of timber so four codes they are given is 401 is 1141 is 269 is 811112 so these two codes so first one is code for the opc 33 second one is the code for the opc 43 now whatever the is 401 is there that is the code for the preservation of timber and whatever the is 1141 is there that is the code for the seasoning of the timber so what is been asked in the question guidelines for the preservation of the timber so is 401 is the answer next one which of the following is the water soluble type preservant okay so basically preservation of the timber is done to increase the life of the timber okay preservation is done to increase the life of the timber now we use different types of preservants so basically three types of preservants are there they are oil type organic solvent type and water soluble type three types are there so now if you take the oil type the example is creosote oil okay for oil type example is creosote oil and if you take the organic solvent type example is trichlorophenol okay trichlorophenol and copper and zinc evitates zinc evitates that's the example and if you take the water soluble type examples are zinc chloride and boric acid and borax these are the examples so now they are asking which of the following is a water soluble type preservant so zinc chloride is the answer okay zinc chloride is the answer whatever the creosote oil is there that is the oil type preservant whatever the zinc evitate is and trichlorophenol is there they are the organic solvent type the next one for timber used in doors and windows moisture content should be okay so if you want to use the timber for doors and windows the moisture content in it should be 8 to 16% how much 8 to 16% so basically if the thickness of the member is 50 mm and above okay if the thickness of the member is 50 mm and above then it should have the moisture content of 10 to 16% and if it is less than 50 mm then it should have the moisture of 8 to 14% so overall what what should be the moisture 8 to 16% okay that's the answer next one diagonal grain is diagonal grain is the defect formed due to improper so basically in timber we have different types of defects and diagonal grain is the defect due to the defect due to the conversion of timber okay defect due to the conversion of timber that means uh, while cutting the timber or else while shaping the timber whatever the defects are there they are called as defect due to conversion and in this defect due to conversion suppose if you take the seasoning okay if you take the seasoning whether that is the conversioning process 
No. Okay, that means you are not changing the shape of the timber there. You are not cutting the timber there. Then felling, it's also not. And preservation, it's also not. So, sawing is the conversion process here. Okay. So, diagonal grain is a defect formed due to improper sawing. Okay. Then, next one, the defect indicated by curvature formed in a transverse direction is. Okay. So, here now, if you take a timber log like this. Okay. If you take a timber log like this. So, whatever the curvature is there in the longitudinal direction. Okay. Suppose this is the longitudinal direction and we have a timber we have a timber log like this suppose this is the longitudinal direction so in the in the longitudinal direction whatever the curvature is there that is called as a bow and in this direction whatever the curvature is there that is called as cup okay so bow is the curvature formed in the longitudinal direction and cup is the curvature formed in the transverse direction Okay, now they are asking the defect indi indicated by curvature formed in a transverse direction is what is that? That is the transverse direction, it is the cup. Okay, then what is the twist is basically if the timber is subjected, if the tree is subjected to high wind, then whatever the whatever the tree is there, whatever the timber is there, that will be subjected to twisting. Okay, that is the twist. So what is the answer here? Cup because that is the transverse, okay, uh, curvature in the transverse direction. The next one, an assembled product made up of veneers and adhesives is called as. Basically, veneers means thin sheets of timber. Okay, veneers means what? Thin sheets of timber. So now, if you stick thin, these thin sheets of timber using adhesives, then the wood obtained is called as, the product obtained is called as plywood. So now, if you want to get the plywood, minimum how, how many number of sheets you have to add, uh, how many number of sheets you have to stick is three or more in odd number. Okay, three or more in odd number. That means you can use three, five, seven, nine like that. But you should never use even number of thin sheets to obtain the plywood. Okay, so plywood is made up of what? Plywood is made up of veneers. Veneers means what? Thin sheets of wood. Then last question, in which of the following direction the strength of the timber is maximum? Okay, so basically if you take the timber log, it consists of grains. Okay, timber log consists of grains like this. So now whatever the strength of the timber is there, that is maximum along the grains. Okay, that is maximum along the grains, that means parallel the grains. That's why if you see the sawing, we always do it parallel to the grains. Okay, sawing is always done parallel to grains because in this direction, the strength will be maximum. Okay, so in which of the following direction, the strength of the timber is maximum, that is a parallel to the grains. That's why only we cut the timber always parallel to the grains because we will obtain the timber with the highest strength. Okay, so this is about the questions of the timber. If you like this video, please share it to your friends and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.